G'day everyone, this is Daniel LaGrady. Thank you very much for joining me for another Wasabi Cars video. And in this video, I'll be taking you to Humobility World, which is Daihatsu's factory slash museum tour, and it is located north of Osaka City. There really are some great factory museums here in Japan. There's Mazdas in Hiroshima, and near Nagoya you have Toyota and Mitsubishis. So I guess the Daihatsu factory tour does compare with those, but with way less interesting cars. Now first you have to make an appointment, and then when you get to the front door, the security will guide you through to the main area, and you are confronted by these Jibanyan Daihatsus. Um, I don't even know what they are. Are they mirrors? They could be mirrors. We then get ushered into a room to watch a video. It's sort of interesting, but it's more future focused. There's a little bit about the history of the Daihatsu brand, which is sort of semi-interesting. Now, when the company was established in 1907, they were known as the Hatsu Doki Seizo Kabushiki Geisha, which is company. And then in 1951, they changed the name to Daihatsu. Oddly, in the 1930s, there were three-wheel trucks called Daihatsus. So I don't know what to make of that 20-year discrepancy with the name. It's really, really odd. So once the movie's done, we get pushed back out in front of these Jibanyan mirrors and we talk about that for a little bit and then we are guided over to this thing right here. It is a stationary power plant from 1933. And the one interesting fact I'd like to bring up sort of out of order is Daihatsu is the oldest surviving Japanese internal combustion engine manufacturers. Now I've got to say this big lump of engine is not quite as interesting as the three wheel truck next to it. This is from 1931 and it has been beautifully restored. The engine, single cylinder, 498cc based. Now I've seen a couple of these and I did see one of the Sepia collection. Go to the website, there's a link down the bottom to the Sepia collection. Go check out that stuff. Really, really obscure, interesting old Japanese cars. Go do that. Now in the 1930s, Daihatsu were all about the three-wheel truck, but it evolved into something more like a car, and that is it right here, the midget. And I even saw this interesting example at the Autobuck store in Kurume in Fukuoka Prefecture. Now let's get back to the Daihatsu exhibit and check out this guy right here. I mean, he is having a good old think. He's pondering if he is really cut out for this job. So moving on from these three-wheeled workhorses, we get to passenger cars. And uh, from 1966, a K car, and at the time, K cars were sub 360 cubic centimeters. And this example is absolutely fine. And looking at the information on the board, you can see that this would have cost a person six months of their salary. Moving on up into the late 70s, we have a first generation Daihatsu Charade. Now this car was awarded the Japanese Car of the Year in 1978, and I'm unsure who awarded this, uh, Daihatsu's mum probably. And check out those seats, tartan, so cool. Reminds me of a few other cars, Isuzu's Gemini, and also the RX-7, check that out right there. Back to the Green Beast, and this was last registered in 1996. The next passenger car of note was the Daihatsu Mirror, and it may have some people seeing red. Check out what Daihatsu had to say of the 1980s. A boom period never experienced before. More women began to participate in various aspects of society. I don't know, I think, is that offensive? It, it could be. However, it is a beautiful car, and check out the dash right there. 29 kilometers on the clock. That is amazing. And everything about this mirror is okay. So from the mirror, we move on pretty quickly through the 90s and the 2000s. You can see there's a Daihatsu move over there, a Kopen, and also the Aira, which is rebadged in various Asian markets. It could be a Toyota or it could be a Perodua. And that's pretty much all that Daihatsu have to say about their heritage and where they're at now. We then move on to the future and then technology and interactive exhibits of which I have no videos. But you know, they really give you a good understanding about differentials and engine and uh, all sorts of things like that. And then check out this cutaway car and that is spectacular because you really can see how flimsy they can make a car. It's breathtaking. 
Now, as much as I did enjoy my time at Hugh Mobility World, I feel there were a few Daihatsus from the past that they should have had represented in the collection. The Compano for one. I'm going to have to double check my facts, but I believe this was the first Japanese passenger car to be marketed in the UK. Also, the fellow Max, a sporty little two-door. They should have had a couple of those on display. Even the fellow Max Buggy. They made a hundred of those. And then a little bit later, the De Tomaso Charade. It would have been great to see one of those even. So question of the day is what are you missing? Because this museum is missing some great cars. Okay, so leave that in the comments below. Thank you very much everyone and take it easy. Goodbye. With a little bit of rust and a little bit of dirt on wasabi, gals and a little bit of wasabi.